This is not a Master Monkey show, so don't be expecting beats. There's no beats here today, I don't think. Probably. So, uh, anyways. This is another one of my very rare talkie shows. I don't do these sorts of things very often, but I already had this planned for most of the day. I don't know if the vocals are coming in either. Hold on. I might have to tweak that up a little bit according to these graphs. Okay, it's me. I'm back. Hey. All right, so... Uh, I don't think I have the chat up. No, I don't. I definitely don't have the chat up. So, uh, I'll check in on the chat in a few minutes. But actually, I don't really have to, because if, you, if you're uh, in the show... Not replay traffic, so don't try this if you're on replay, but... Um, if you're in the show, actually, and you type something in the chat, it will appear in this little, uh, see these pop-up bubbles above these icons over there. And, uh, so this is one of the new features I was going to talk about, um, that have been recently added to Don't Sound TV. You know, and I, I thought I heard, yeah, you know what, Don't Sound TV just decided to play, um, a song, actually, so, I had a whole agenda, but... Let's give the interface just a second to the layout, just a second to update, and it will say who we're listening to. So they should be probably attributed. Oh, I guess Green Dutch. Yeah, it is Green Dutch. You are currently listening to Green Dutch, uh, Venom Spits. If you go to SoundCloud.com and you search for Green Dutch, and you search for uh, Venom Spits, you will find it. It's a cool track, and we're hearing it right now. Anyways, that's not what this show is about. This is uh, about me coming in from the other side of the room. Give me a second. Oh, I gotta turn that down. I tell you that is supremely annoying to hear an echo of yourself uh, of what you said about 60 seconds ago so yeah here in my house the uh, the stream delay is about 60 seconds so be aware that that is not unusual and I think we will touch on this topic a little bit um, about stream delay and you're going to see how this stuff works anyways now I mean it's a sort of bane of uh, of uh, streamers everywhere, but really it's important to understand that there's nothing that can be done about it. I had somebody ask me recently, I'm killing time while I adjust the layout here for you guys. Somebody asked me once, they're like, why is there a stream delay? I understand I mean, it's a valid question, but the only answer I could come up with off the top of my head was uh, because physics. So, yeah, you know. Uh, things take time to transfer, even if they travel at the speed of light. That is still not an infinite speed. Um, so, things take time. <laughs> the real problem with, uh, with video stream delay, as far as streamers uh, are concerned, is uh, that I can't, I can't tell how long your stream delay is, and it's going to be different for everybody, and I don't have a whole lot of control over it. So, um, I mean, the, what I could do, uh, when, I mean, and some systems do this, is they could lower the uh, insert of delay in the stream such that everybody is delayed the same amount as the slowest recipient. Okay, we're getting way too geeky here. Let's back up and get to the agenda. So, welcome to the show, and thanks for tuning in. Um, I said this is an AMA, as well as a, another update to uh, the Drone Sound TV uh, crash course. So as I said, even though uh, you can't see that I have the chat on the screen, there is a chat log and there's the little chat bubbles too. So you can use that to AMA, as they say, which in case you don't know, stands for Ask Me Anything. Um, let's see what's on the agenda here. Uh, what you are seeing and hearing. Okay, so first timers. First time you've never seen Drone Sound TV before, what the heck is this? Drone Sound TV is the autonomous 24-7 uh, um, multi lo-fi media and uh, ambient noise sandbox, which is operated autonomously by this here Raspberry Pi um, that I'm currently touching, which I probably haven't touched. But anyways, it's operated by that there Raspberry Pi and uh, a couple of backups standing by in case. Um, 
In terms of operating operated by, uh, what I mean is that it goes to freesound.org, which um, you can go to. In fact, let's go there. We're going to go there real quick. And you're going to see how this works. Do -do 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 um, so on the screen, you're seeing what Drone Chat TV normally looks like. Now, when I, I'm going to click this button here that you don't see, and there you see that now half of the screen is actually my desktop. So you can see see what, what I'm seeing. And uh, we're going to get to the other stuff that's going on there in a minute. So behind, you see the actual Drone Sound TV layout, which is CSS and HTML, so web page. So, um, and we'll get into how all of that works. But first, a um, fielded uh, trip to freesound.org, in case you've never been there. Again, I'll remind you, these sounds you're hearing in the background, that is the sound of the Drone Sound TV. That's what it always sounds like. In other, um, in other news, um, uh, I just got my first Blue Apron order. That's kind of cool, right? I guess into that, so I don't know if you are. This is my first, my first Blue Apron order. It's going to be seared chicken and uh, caramelized vegetables. So I'll let you know how that turns out. Anyways, um, so here we are at freesound.org. Freesound.org is an open source, uh, creative commons, whatever. A variety of licenses, all of them, you know, free, obviously. Um, uh, community uh, that collects uh, sampling uh, material, so samples, audio samples. Um, here's an example right here, but you won't hear it uh, because I don't, I don't play the audio from the desktop. But you know, so this is an example of one of their, of one of their sounds, and and I'll show you in a minute. Well, actually, we will be able to play this. Just remember that number, it's 215777. We can play that through Drone Sound TV. Okay, so on Drone, on uh, Freesound, I'm going to decrease this thing a bit. And to remind you again, the, the right hand side of your screen is the normal Drone Sound TV. The left hand side of your screen is my desktop, so that I can show you, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. This is what it normally looks like weird lo fi glitch displays and, um, and attributions for uh, the various media that are going on and uh, other cool stuff. So anyways, we'll get back to that. Um, so here we are, again, over in Freesound. And um, in Freesound, you'll see that we can search for something. So for example, I will search for uh, cosmonaut, co Cosmonauts. I'm going to search for Cosmonauts, uh, which is the Russian term for an astronaut. So here's one here. I'm going to click on it. And you'll see that it's called uh, 160210ISS1MP3. It's by the very talented sound designer Zibilet. It was recorded on a Tascam DR100MK2, which is something I really want. Those things are awesome. Um, and uh, it's a really good recording. It's so good um, that I actually put a comment on it here, as you can see. So, um, <coughs> pardon, what does it sound like? Well, actually, so what we're going to do is we're going to do it the Drone Sound TV way, which is from the chat in Drone Sound TV, which I should be in right here, I think. Am I? I'm not really sure if I'm in the chat. I am not in the chat. Okay. Well, first we're going to have to go to Drone Sound TV and then go to chat. So how are you guys doing? Uh, Mr. Trump, I have a message for you. Um, after six years, that is not going to cut it, dude. You need to give the guy an apology in person. I think he should probably wash his car, too. I think that's, that's, uh, that's fair. These are guy rolls, dude. You don't dispute them with me. You know these are guy rolls, okay? Everybody knows these are guy rolls. Okay, so it says we're live now. Which good because I need to go there to go to the chat. Um, forgive me if you're actually watching, which is unlikely. But if you're actually watching, this is going to clog up the machine a little bit. Um, now the extremely heavy load that is introduced um, from running <coughs> pardon, a streaming suite like OBS is one of the reasons that I developed this system in the first place. Um, so I have a, um, a Lenovo Flex. I think it's a Flex One or whatever. It's a pretty good laptop, actually. But even a very powerful computer is uh, pretty heavily taxed by running a live stream. It's a lot of work in short. 
So um, I didn't have another computer uh, to run all these kinds of other fancy stuff I wanted to do that really no system does anyways. Um, I didn't have a machine that could run that, but what I did have was a Raspberry Pi. So I, I wrote all of this um, functionality into the Raspberry Pi, so now it all runs there. Okay, here we are on the chat. And uh, so you'll see if you're in the chat, or if you ever do go to the chat on Drone Sound TV, which you should, um, uh, you will see that it takes commands by by from the chat usually. Uh, there it is. Okay, yay. So I slowed it down recently. It was running a bit too fast. Um, it's kind of breaking the rules a little bit. There's a little geek background. It turns out um, so when you're using the YouTube API to read messages from the chat. Uh, it's called live chat messages. So you access this um, resource, <coughs> and when you do so, actually, um, it tells you, it tells you when the next time you should poll is, and it adjusts these numbers according to their own scheme. Um, I've never seen this number go below like seven seconds, or I think eight seconds is what I usually see on the response. Um, so I told my tool to stop um, looking at the response. <coughs> it doesn't even look at it. It it just runs at something like 6.7 seconds or something all the time so um, that's breaking the rules actually I have to I have to come up with a slightly smarter algorithm I mean their their approach is correct but unfortunately what happens is users show up and they'll type something right away like um, like help and uh, I mean if they can get an answer in like three seconds that's that's fantastic but I mean even that that was really freaking fast by the way <coughs> faster than it should be because I'm breaking the rules um, but so if you, by the way, if, if this is your first time using a chatbot or using Drone Sound TV, please keep that in mind. There's absolutely no one who can answer faster than that. I mean, if they do, then it's, you're lucky. And it just happened that the bot was about to check <coughs> right then. So anyways, I'm going to have to edit most of this out. Crap. I was trying to make these things so I don't have to edit them, but I have an agenda and everything. So here's what happens if you type help. Uh, it does this, and uh, if you type commands, it, it gives you all of the commands that uh, that it can do. Now, I promise that when we came here, <coughs> we're going to hear some cosmonauts. So the way you'll see in the commands, one of them is, uh, it's not listed in there. That's stupid. I just now noticed this. Drone is such a, a central, it's the very first command in the system. It's the, um, really the core functionality, is to uh, mix samples from Freesound. And it doesn't just mix them. It does a lot more than that. <coughs> it uh, mutilates them in various ways. It applies a variety of effects to them that are keyed um, like to each other. And it's a whole thing. I got a diagram about how that works. And um, it also selects sounds that are, oh, I forgot. Drone doesn't do anything if you don't say anything. OK, so I'm going to say drone uh, Cosmo not. And um, what it will do is it's going to do the same thing that I did. Uh, it searches Freesound using their API. They have a great API. <coughs> searches Freesound for um, Cosmonaut, and uh, it finds some sounds. Oh, and it also flashes that LED over there uh, so that you can see. Uh, and, uh, Enterprise takes a few hits there. <coughs> uh, we're experiencing turbulence, Captain. Okay. Oh, and we're hearing it now. So that's what it picked out. And you're going to see momentarily, I'm going to remove the desktop uh, window uh, view for a moment. And you'll see momentarily the credits will show. Um, the credits are going to show uh, the author. Um, I don't know, but we might well have picked this one, actually. <coughs> it doesn't always pick the first one, uh, it, it picks from the like. 150 most popular ones, and then it selects randomly, and as I said, there are other criteria as well. Um, often it picks one uh, that is similar to a previous sound that it had played, uh, if it was um, uh, like of a similar frequency or uh, and or a similar BPM, um, and it, if the other sound was popularly rated, uh, or highly rated. So in free sound, back on. In Freesound, uh, the sounds have ratings and it's a really active little community, so when you rate a sound more highly, it will be more likely to be played in Drone Sound TV. So I did that intentionally. 
Uh, also note that if you wanted a specific sound, I don't think we did get this one. I think we got a different one. Um, you can use the actual number. Um, so that works too. So back over to the chat here. You'll see I can also do drone and then that number, which was 336155, right? See, it's the number uh, of this sound is the sound ID, 336155. So if you want to be really specific, um, you can actually get the number and it will, it will add that sound into the mix. And as I said, you can hear it's actually, even the one that I picked out from the search for Cosmonaut, it's not quite, uh, you know, unmodified. It's, I think, it added an echo and pitched it down maybe a bit. Um, there's also a filter, like a low-pass filter and a matting high-pass filter, too, um, that you can apply. When you type filter in the chat, it tells you what the current value is. Basically, that's the model one I'm using. I want almost all of it to be controllable by chat. And I'm not just talking about the sound. I'm, we're going to talk about the layout and stuff. You've probably seen that elsewhere. That's pretty much the big deal on Drone Sound TV and um, with the bot that I'm developing. Um, that it puts not just you in charge of your layout and the sounds and the content and the media and all of that, but puts the audience in charge of those things. Um, that's really why, where I want to go with it. So right now the filter is set at 4444 uh, four, 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 uh, hertz. Um, like if you set it, you know, uh, down somewhere really low, um, and you know, then you'll start to hear it start to choke down and you won't hear high, um, you know, higher frequencies and stuff. So anyways. Uh, so that's um, a cup. that's the base like basic droning uh, functionality, which is really what it, it started with um, to begin with. Now I recently added this really cool thing um, that I plan to expand uh, even further. Uh, I, I think it's cool. It's kind of like the opposite. I added this actually about a month ago. Um, so when you do type a command, for example, there's a command called tips, and if you need to drone sat TV, I suggest you use it. Actually, it's just tip. Some of these commands have aliases, so if you type tips instead of tip, it still works. Um, so tip gives you, um, an from an updated updating list of tips, a, a randomly selected bit of advice about how uh, drone sound TV works. And that stuff's always getting updated. So, anyways, but when you type tip, it does this, but I wrote this actually um, in response to my aversion to uh, these commands spamming up the chat. So if you look, I just typed tip, but I preceded it with a, uh, a minus sign, and, and now it says the message is gone. It just gets deleted. So um, I call this disappearing ink. Uh, again, I'll, uh, I'll show you how that works. And, and it doesn't have to be a command. You can just uh, type uh, whatever you want, like here's... Uh, Here's a regular thing, and that doesn't go any anywhere. But whatever you type, if you just put, um, if you put a hyphen in front as the first character on the line, then whatever you type afterwards, um, it still goes into the chat. But after about 40 seconds, it gets deleted, which I think is really cool. So, <coughs> one of the things um, I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it a, a an option. If you're a subscriber, it'll be one of the subscriber benefits. You can just you'll say like set privacy you know, total or something, which means that all of your messages just get deleted. And I also thought it'd be a thing for etiquette, really, because, like, I want to see the status, the system status. The status command tells you what the system's up to. It's a Raspberry Pi, so um, it includes, for example, the uptime. Um, but I do want to see the status. I, I just don't want, like, the thing, you know, the message spamming up the, the back scroll if somebody comes in to see it. So, um, so it's really cool. A little bonus thing, one of several innovations here. <coughs> so that's just pairing ink. Um, the background command uh, BG, um, and I'm going to get rid of the desktop thing here. Uh, changes the background, um, changes the background to a random picture uh, from a selection of pictures. I can't remember how many there are, a couple hundred or something. It doesn't really matter because the it, with every bit of media in here, our end users are empowered to add to it and expected to add to it. And I have no desire to get into the business of, you know, selecting and collecting, uh, you know, backgrounds and things like that. So it's all about empowering uh, your end users to do, uh, you know, not just like your moderators to help you lay out a channel or, oops, or something, but even have, you know, like users be able to you know, like take over the channel, have a takeover and run their own show or something with their own layouts or um, have their own personal layout for 
w when they're just you know like um, watching the channel by themselves or something like that, um, or maybe share layouts among users. <coughs> yes, this is all possible because, uh, as I said, the layout is entirely CSS and HTML, and it's all controlled from the chat from the bot. So, anyways, you'll see that the background image um, has changed. If you didn't notice, it was something else before. So uh, I'll type it again in the chat, but y you don't see the chat on the screen at the moment. That's not me typing code, by the way. Um, that's one of the weird um, Drone Sound TV uh, low-tech displays. I like them. It's just a funny thing. It sits there and it types out code and then it runs the code. And they're all like one-liners that do weird little things. Okay, so you'll see that it has changed the background again. And uh, that's what the, back the BG command does. You can also change it to a color, for example, like if we wanted um, uh, all red. And you can do the color command. And I'm going to turn the desktop back on for a second so you can see. So I just did color FF00. Zero, zero. Oh, it looks like I left off the rest of the zeros, but I'm sure it'll work. It doesn't care. I just treat it like um, HTML anyways. So um, that will use a color instead of a background. And there's actually a bunch of these. Uh, I'm not going to go through like the really routine ones. Um, now theme is actually where the stuff is, where the real fun is. <coughs> so you see as we're saying like we're changing you know colors and backgrounds and stuff, um, theme changes all of it. It, ch it changes the uh, entire HTML and CSS files that are used. You know, I might get into how that works. <coughs> at the moment uh, when you run the themes command it will tell you whatever themes are currently available. At the moment these are the ones available. We're using the default one, but um, just to give you a quick um, a quick uh, review of, of how much um, you know, like the the range of functionality. I'm, I'm trying to um, convey that it's not about like this layout or that layout or changing backgrounds or something, because the entire point is to have users in charge of the entire layout, so they can upload CSS and HTML from Pastebin. Um, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm not that great at making HTML layouts, and I don't want to be. I actually want to find someone and say, hey, can you make me a layout? Uh, note that this is something that can't currently be done with any other system. No one else can, can make a layout for you. They, you, you have to make the layout. <coughs> and that's, um, that's awful. So um, anyways, uh, so these are some of the themes. Um, I'm going to show you one of them, because like right now it's theme default. Uh, I'm going to change the theme uh, future, and you'll, you'll see that it'll be very different, but as soon as I type this, I'm going to turn off the desktop, right, the desktop view, so you'll see the response from DroneBot. It will say, oh, okay, I'm changing the theme. And then I'm going to turn off the desktop so you can see the actual theme. See? It says, okay, I've changed the theme. So again, I want to point out, if you're using Drone Sound TV, just wait for the bot, okay? It's reliable. It will answer you. Don't type 50 times. This is how long bots take. And it's already cheating, as I said. <coughs> it actually should be waiting uh, closer to 8 seconds. I'm, I'm stealing 2 seconds. And uh, that actually took some time to figure that out. And sometimes it actually gets penalized for that. You, you get in trouble. If you, uh, if you request too quickly, um, it'll tell you, it'll tell you, ah, you're requesting too quickly. And then you have to wait. Like, so you lose that, that time. It's a bummer. It's pretty clever. Um, you can't see the chat lobby because in this theme, it's moved over to this side of the screen. So again, I mean, the chat lobby is just, um, well, it's a token. I'll show you how that works later, maybe someday. <coughs> Not in this one, sorry. Um, so the chat lobby, you can add to any theme just by putting the right token in the right place. Um, and in this instance, I put the chat lobby token over on this side of the screen. And this one is, you know, completely different. It has three uh, still shots from a really old advertisement, and with part of these things cut out with a uh, with green screen. And then behind it, the uh, the console is displaying. Um, so you can see that's a completely different theme. That's the future theme. But it, again, it's not about which themes because they're going to change all the time. Um, it's really more about the, the range of functionality that themes can have. So I'm going to show you a couple of these themes. 
and I already showed you drone. I didn't show you mood um, or mix, which is the SoundCloud playing. I did show you filter. I didn't show you bling. I could skip that. All right. So um, and it does take actually it does take a little while for the theme to change, and and as I was alluding to before, even longer for the stream, the actual effects to reach you, which is the video stream, right? So, as I said, no one can really um, control that completely. It's always going to be some time. It's never going to be instant. Um, let's see. And and more to the point, I, no one knows what it is. I mean, we could like. I could take a measurement. There would be ways that I could take a measurement of what your latency is, but it could have changed be since I took the last measurement, so what is the point in a measurement? Um, anyways, uh, that's going on with that. So there's the three theme. Um, it's completely different. See, it also uses a green screen cutout, but it has some attribution uh, banner at the top and um, a really ugly version of the chat lobby. Uh, let's see, another theme. Um, let's try... Oh, so this is the one I was going to show. So this one, this next one I'm going to show you, I, I just started with this one, and uh, it has, has needs some smoothing out. Um, but it's definitely the, the direction that I, I'm going to take it, and it makes use of a new command called uh, media, which I haven't shared with anyone yet, and it's not in the user manual. Incidentally, the user manual is accessible by typing RTFM, in the chat, and it will give you the link to the the current latest link to the uh, latest user manual. So it'll always be up to date. So if you want the latest manual, uh, just go in the chat and type RDFM. And there's probably a bunch of aliases for that too. And it's funny that it makes it look like like I said that, which I did. What did see with the chat bubble over there? Anyways. Well, this is a good theme for this, actually, because, um, so this is the, what is it called? Dizzy. And the name might change anyways. This will probably be the new default look or something. So up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, you'll see it says Mood Sci-Fi. And I didn't talk about um, moods before, but remember I was talking about how, like, it's playing these sounds in the background, and I showed you where the sounds come from, but I didn't explain why it was picking those sounds. And uh, but there's some... Some clues over here, you'll see these, this list right here are the sounds it's playing. These are the sound IDs, the author, the length, and the keyword that we use to find them. <coughs> Usually this will say things like violin, or, or ferry boat, or thunder, lightning, rain, things like that. Honestly, there's kind of an, uh, a craft, at least, if not an art, to curating these keywords. <laughs> And it's taken me quite a while to put together some of the, the better moods. Some moods are not actually very effective at, at conveying it. Um, but when it's done well, it does what I hope to achieve, which is basically this. I'll explain the philosophy behind Drone Sound TV. This is the sci-fi mood. When you set the sci-fi mood, here's what should happen. You turn up your speakers and you go about what you were doing, listening to music or playing the radio or, or I mean you know reading a book or whatever it is you were doing it doesn't have to be that you stop and listen to it it has to be that you play it in the background and it feels like you're in a sci-fi environment right so um, that's what that's what the moods are and the moods are collections of keywords that I've curated and uh, users of course will be able to curate their own moods which are collections of keywords um, so instead of typing you know drone cosmonaut or whatever You'll have a whole set of keywords that you upload from Pastebin, and you'll call it your own mood. Um, so over here, I'm using the new uh, this command that I'm only introducing to you now, but it's a core command of Drone Sound TV called mood. When you type mood by itself, as with most of the commands, it will tell you um, either how it works and/or what the currently current settings are. This is the basic, um, you know, interface philosophy, the operational philosophy uh, behind. Drone Sound TV. So if you don't know how something works, just type the name of it and it will tell you how it works and very often what it's doing. So right now it says that the mood is sci-fi, but other avail but it also says that other available moods include uh, odd, which is an odd mood, uh, quiet, which is super quiet, um, relax, um, a tech mood, which uh, sounds kind of like you're in a data center or some sort of like weird cyber type environment and Arcade, which is one of my favorites, actually. <coughs> the intent of which is to 
uh, convey the experience of being in an arcade. And, um, <coughs> pardon me. And that one's a little, actually, a little bit rough around the edges. Sometimes things creep in that are not necessarily arcade related. But um, overall, I think it's a good example of what I'm, I'm trying to achieve with the, the thing. So, um, uh, in response to uh, a just really extensive community pressure, I have also um, added support for music in a variety of forms. You can uh, add a song from SoundCloud if the author uh, permits downloads. I, do do I don't do streaming yet, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, it's mostly about attribution, actually. Um, but I'm going to. Uh, also, if you don't have one handy, you can type uh, mix random, use the mix and random command, um, which will uh, which will play you know a random song from a curated list again um, that I've curated. But in the future, users will totally have the ability to modify themselves. It shows um, Mike Leghorn's rendition of Symphonia. Um, which is Bach, right? I hope I'm right. Um, Michael Leghorn, you'll find him on SoundCloud.com. Uh, check him out. He does this really nice synth stuff. Uh, I think he uses a micro boot or a mini boot. Um, anyways, the guy does great uh, renditions of classical uh, organ or harpsichord type stuff. It's really nice. Check him out. Um, You'll also note that in the chat, there is extensive attribution in the chat itself, including a link to the sound itself. So you can go there and like rate it and you know say, hey, this was awesome, or whatever, which you should. Um, now, out of the right, you'll also notice it says Mood Arcade, but it hasn't like changed immediately, you know, which is, uh, um, this was designed in, actually, so... It kind of continues playing from the old playlist. It already had a list of things it was going to play. And it, it just starts working in new stuff from the, um, the new set of keywords. And you're wondering what this looks like. I'll show you. Over. Oh, I can't show you. Never mind. I'll show you some other time. <laughs> um, another thing recently added is the uh, duck feature. I know you're like, wait, duck? Where's there a duck? I thought there was a monkey and I'm duck. Um, yeah, actually, so the duck is when um, music is playing from SoundCloud, which is playing in the background. Then the samples, which do continue to play, I don't stop playing free sound sounds. I don't stop the mood because, as I said, it's not. It, it's you know supposed to feel like. Uh, so in this case, we're listening to Symphonia, right? What I want it to feel like is that. Since what are we hearing? Thunder or something? I want to feel that we're like in a forest, in a storm, and there's thunder and lightning, and a guy playing symphonia on a synthesizer. You get it? That's what I'm like trying to set up this environment, but I want users to be in charge of all of it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have like, you know, yeah, now we got a guy playing a synthesizer in an arcade. You get it? So, um, so for Halloween, there's going to be a huge, obviously, though, this is, you know, tailor made for Halloween. Um, and if you don't know the backstory, this actually have all evolved from my earlier incarnations of this same uh, program, basically this same concept um, that I've implemented on Android. There's one for Android called Sonic Monkey. Uh, as a matter of fact, the directory in which this software lives is still called Sonic Monkey. Um, and, uh, and other versions even before this, like I had a web uh, Java applet that did kind of very similar thing. Just a droning sound by mixing it together and, and modifying it and stuff. So this is the really the most advanced incarnation of this that I've had so far. Um, while we're looking at there's also a subcommand. I don't think I want to talk about that though. The subcommand does work, is all I'll say. Now it's like kind of controversial because on YouTube there are no bots that subscribe back to you if you, you know, subscribe to them. So people are skeptical that it works. Well, it works. I, they don't exist because it's... It's not that they don't exist because they're not possible. They just don't exist because they don't exist yet. But I've written one, so use it. It's here. Um, to use it, all you got to do is be a subscriber of the channel. Of the channel. Yep, of the channel. 
be a subscriber of the channel and um, type the sub command and uh, it will subscribe back to you. DroneBot will subscribe to your channel. Which is handy if you're a new subscriber. It's kind of depressing. You got like four subs forever. So um, it will subscribe back to you. Um, it can't tell if you're a subscriber if you're... Um, if your subscriptions are private, so that's an issue, and it will tell you if it, if your subscriptions are private, it will tell you, hey, I can't tell, because your subs are private, and it will even send you to the page that you need to go to in your YouTube settings to uncheck the box. So if you do that and you uncheck the box, and you're a subscriber like you said you are, then you type sub, and it will subscribe back to you as you see it has done. Another cool bonus that I just added is. If um, and when you type the sub, it will tell you uh, who the last subscriber was and give you a link to their channel, so that you can subscribe to them. See, I'm trying to like I'm trying to pay it forward for you guys, right? So, anyways, those of you out there who are skeptical that a bot can subscribe back to you, you've just seen it happen. It works. So, all you got to do is follow its instructions. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm sorry, you guys, but you would not believe how much flack I have taken. I, I've had, like, a great number of people. I went from, like, 20 subs to 70 in three days or something. Um, they go, well, yeah, it works, and then they tell their friends, and all their friends come and sub. But then, inevitably, there's one person who who doesn't, you know, isn't a subscriber or thinks they're going to cheat a computer or I don't know what their deal is. Or they can't read. I think they don't read the instructions. So just follow the instructions. It works, guys. Trust me. All right, so I think that's enough for one day. I've already tapped out. Plus, like I said, I got to get to work on these uh, seared uh, seared chicken caramelized vegetables. Shit, the agenda said I was going to work on new watchable code for a new command. I'm working on it called stickers, so that yeah, actually the command will be called stick, and it's so that you can stick an image on the screen so that we can um, use this channel to watch presidential debates together in real time and uh, stick things on their faces, um, which is really what they all deserve <laughs> anyways. <laughs> no matter what side they're from, they all deserve pies in the faces. Okay, pie, that's the first sticker, is a banana pie. A dripping banana pie for every candidate is the absolute first thing they should get. Okay. I think that's enough for this sesh. I'm going to have to edit it a bunch. Stay tuned because we return you to your regularly scheduled Drone Sound TV. And that will be the end of that story. Until I see you next time again, this is Master Monkey saying stay true, stay low. Monkey out.